welcome you to friends and family to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader. And I hope you all had a very happy Mother's Day. It's actually Mother's Day when I'm filming this. And I will be going to see my mom here, oh, I don't know, in a couple hours, <laughs> and maybe three. And I just wanted to take something that my mom might enjoy. And there is one thing that my mom absolutely loves and has lost, not lost her taste for besides chocolate, <laughs> and that happens to be coffee. So, y'all, I have to share this book with you. It is an amazing book. I will link it in the description box below. It is called Dory's Cookies. Now, this is a 2016 book. You notice all these things? Mm -hmm, that's everything I want to make. <laughs> because having done some freezer meals, I thought it would be incredibly nice to have some pre-frozen cookies as well. So I will be doing a separate video. Um, three or four kinds of cookies, all made from a basic vanilla batter. One of the great things about this book, in addition, it's not just your chocolate chip oatmeal type raisin cookies. No, they are very different, very fun, and I think they're going to be quite tasty. So, in the front of this book, Dory goes through some really good basic information about how to make the best possible cookies. So, um, I'm excited because I learned a couple things. One of the things that I have done is I have preheated my oven to 350. Her recommendation is that you leave your oven on up to 30 minutes longer to make sure the temperature is um, up to par. I think with digital ranges that that's unnecessary, but I went ahead and started mine up. Now for the sake of time, I am gonna tell you what is in this, but I have pre-measured. So in my mixer bowl, I have, sorry, um, one stick unsalted butter, a quarter cup of brown sugar, half a cup of white sugar, and a tablespoon of espresso powder. And um, this is actually, ooh, espresso instant coffee. Um, it says that you can even grind up espresso beans. I think that might be a bit much. <laughs> And guys, this was hard to find. I had to go to a couple stores to find it. I'm sure you can buy it on Amazon, but I found it at Kroger if you have Kroger near you. And also, let's see, I think it's a half teaspoon of fine sea salt. So it says to beat this on medium speed until well blended about three minutes. So we're gonna do that. And I will bring you back shortly once I have this all beaten together. All right, y'all. So we have a nice, pasty consistency, very well blended. And I can't remember if I said a stick of unsalted butter, but that's what it calls for. If you only have salted, just decrease your salt to maybe quarter teaspoon. All right. Next, we're going to add one egg yolk, beat it for a minute, one whole egg, beat it for a minute, and a teaspoon of vanilla, beat it for a minute, all of that at medium speed. So I wish y'all could smell this. It smells like coffee house heaven. And I just hope it gives my, my mom a degree of enjoyment as we all like to have on Mother's Day. Y'all have dropped me a comment below. Guys, look at these gorgeous orange eggs. My girls have been free ranging. It rained most of the day yesterday. So um, they played in their run because they don't like <laughs> to be out there. They just don't like it when it's raining. They're a little spoiled, just saying. Yeah, just saying. This morning they could not wait to get out. You know, like six o'clock I let them out. It was about making me sick because they were eating the biggest um, worms. Ugh. But they must have known the rain would bring them to the surface. So we're just creaming this really well. Oh, y'all, it smells so good. And I'm gonna do the vanilla next. I measure vanilla with my heart, not with a teaspoon. I was like a little bit extra. Just makes everything better, right? 
So we're going to let that mix. We're going to let our second egg mix. I will bring you back to talk about dry ingredients, the consistency of the cookie, which is going to be a little bit different. We'll get them scooped out and get to bacon. Stay tuned. All right. We have our egg yolk, our whole egg, and our vanilla in our uh, wet ingredients. I'll get it out. Mixed together. There's a little bit of egg yolk right there. And let me explain to you what our next ingredients are going to be. So this is malted milk powder, and it says non-diastatic. So don't buy diastatic malt powder. That is what you use for bagels and, and other baking things. You want malted milk, like, you know, like the milkshake malted milk. And I will link this as well. So what you need is a cup and a half of all-purpose flour, a quarter cup of the malted milk powder, and a half teaspoon of baking powder. Now, here's what the directions say, y'all. Um, turn off the mixer, add all the dry ingredients at once, just to begin incorporating flour and malt powder. When the risk of flying flour has passed, mix on low speed only until the dry ingredients disappear into the dough. You'll have a ra rather crumbly dough, but that's fine. Give the dough a last few turns with a sturdy spatula and then reach in need as necessary and gather the dough in a bowl. Okay, flying flower, here we come. <laughs> so I'm trying to follow exactly what they say. Oh, that smells so good. And y'all, you can do this with a hand mixer. You don't have to have a stand mixer. It's definitely crumbly. I'll show you the texture here in just a moment. Wow, it's really dry. It's starting to come together. It's not going to take long, that's for sure. Let me go ahead and scrape that bowl. As I've explained before, I have a large kitchen aid. Sometimes, guys, it's just really hard if you don't have huge amounts, huge volume of dough. I should have bought the smaller mixer, um, but I didn't. So yeah, I'm gonna just like give it a couple more turns. Yeah, I'm gonna call it. All right, so let's drop the bowl. Oh my word, y'all, this smells heavenly. We'll give this beater a great scrape and then I'm gonna show you the texture. I did just recently get this spatula edge uh, paddle beater for my KitchenAid, thinking it might help with low volume recipes. Uh, yeah, it was better. You know, was it perfect? Uh, yeah, obviously not. And I am using regular full gluten flour because I'm baking for others. Um, I'm sure you can use gluten-free one-for-one uh, King Arthur. I'm sure it would come out just fine. But that's not what we're up to today. All right. Okay. <laughs> so here's what we have. So kind of a crumbly dough. And what it says, this is coming together in a bowl, no problem, is to use a small cookie scoop um, or like a rounded teaspoonful. Um, roll them into balls, put them an inch apart on your silicone or parchment paper lined baking sheets. So let me get these rolled out. And we'll get the bacon. So the dough was a dream to handle, no problems whatsoever. It says, bake for 14 minutes, rotating at the eight minute mark front to back and top to bottom, and you're to divide your big oven into thirds, so one rack higher, one rack lower. It says, the cookies will be soft and golden only around the edges. They won't look done and they're not. They'll firm as they cool. Um, cool on the cookie sheets for 10 minutes, then transfer to the baking rack. I got a little over two dozen. Um, I've got another half dozen that I'll scoop out after these two bake and we'll see how they come along. So stay tuned. Our beautiful malted coffee cookie, coffee malted cookies. <laughs> I'll get it right. Are finished. Oh, well, they smell amazing. I have not tasted them. I ended up with two dozen plus eight, so almost three dozen. What I can tell you is I followed the directions to the T about rotating the trays, 
back to front and top to bottom. The ones that were on the silk pad um, are less brown than the ones that were on parchment because the last tray, I didn't want to use a hot tray. I just put on um, parchment, but they still look absolutely fine. So here's what they look like. Mm, let's give them a taste. Mmm. Wow. So crunchy on the outside, nice and soft on the inside. Coffee definitely can taste. Malted is like a back note, but they're not overwhelming. Like I could go for more coffee powder to be honest, <laughs> but I like coffee. These would be great with a cup of coffee, a cup of tea for any coffee lovers in your life. I think this is an excellent recipe and I hope you'll give it a try. We'll be doing more Dory's Cookies recipes and y'all don't wanna miss it. I've got a couple really fun vintage gadgets coming up very soon. Um, I'm trying not to do more than one a week because it isn't everybody's cup of tea. I apologize for not having a video up on Saturday. Guys, I just some days have more than I can say grace over, you know, with just family responsibilities with my mom. So at any rate, I hope you all had a beautiful Mother's Day. Don't forget to smash the like button, drop me a comment. And until I see you again, be healthy, be well, be blessed, take care.